Hello, everybody. Welcome to this IBRA interview. IBRA, as you know, stands for European Brain Research Area Project. It is an EU funded project and it's coming to an end um, this year. As part of the project, several clusters or working groups were put together uh, to bring experts to deep dive into some specific important topics related to brain health. Uh, and today uh, we're going to be talking about uh, preventive um, uh, treatment or preventive um, mental health um, approaches. My name is Franz Nivelle, and I'm the Chief Communication Officers, Officer of uh, eBrains, the research infrastructure specializing in brain research, infrastructure that has been created by the Human Brain Project. And to talk to us about um, this very important topic uh, today, um, I'm very happy to welcome Professor Paolo uh, Puzza Poli from uh, King's College, um, who will tell us more about the work that the cluster has done and um, the challenges um, to take up in the future. Professor, welcome uh, to this interview. Thank you. Good morning or good afternoon. Good afternoon, and thank you for being with us today. We know how precious your time is, but um, uh, it's it's very good to, to have you with us today to um, explain a little bit more about um, the cluster, first of all, the working group. Um, what was the main purpose of, of the working group, um, you know, as a starting point? Thank you. Yeah, the um, Prevention of Severe Mental Disorder cluster was funded by IBRA to um, facilitate collaborative research across the best center of excellence in Europe with respect to prevention of severe mental disorders. And severe mental disorders are, for example, psychosis, depression, and bipolar disorder. And we wanted to foster cross-collaborative research across different, um, different areas of expertise. So it's a multidisciplinary network and uh, is chaired by myself and Professor Ole Andreasen it has 45 members spanning several European countries, including Norway, Italy, Germany, France, the Netherlands, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, Spain, Denmark, Czech Republic, Poland, Turkey, and also uh, international collaborations like the United States. We have strong links with the pharmaceutical company and the current grant income uh, portfolio is about 50 million. The main objective of this uh, cluster is just to foster preventive and precision psychiatric research pan Europe for the benefits particularly of young persons. Okay, well, so definitely a lot of expertise together in that cluster. So um, uh, I'm sure the discussions must have been very, very interesting. Um, but you're talking about uh, precision psychiatry. Can you maybe tell us a little bit more about what this means uh, in more, you know, layman terms? So the idea of preventing mental disorder stems from um, scientific evidence indicating that most mental disorders originate in the uh, adolescence or young adulthood. And therefore, we need to intervene as soon as possible. Not only, but we need also to offer young persons a precision um, prediction. So we need to offer them a tailored preventive care. At the moment, um, Clinical care is built around one size fits all approach, which is not suitable to meet the specific needs presented by young persons, young people. And therefore, the aim of our cluster is to bring advancement from precision medicine, which basically uh, it's a way of tailoring any any intervention to the um, single subject level and then therefore to be more accurate and more personalized in the way we try to help these young persons so the aim of this cluster is to bring into clinical reality precision medicine and therefore to um, develop preventive approaches that can specifically help each young person to overcome their mental health difficulties and therefore impacting their long-term outcomes okay yes but so um how do you how do you get to that you know, personalized um, level. I mean, I understand 
that uh, you use uh, predictive models for that. Um, and, and can you tell us a little bit more about those models and, and how they're built? Sure. So um, in order to personalize the, uh, the treatments, we need to have uh, we need to embed the clinical prediction models. What are clinical predi prediction models? Um, are basically algorithms which use uh, different uh, um, types of information to forecast outcomes in a certain clinical condition in certain patients' populations. And uh, we know that there are several of these algorithms are already ready to be deployed in clinical practice. The problem is that we need to have larger, better data to, um, to test these models and to implement them in clinical practice. And also, we need better governance frameworks to um, share the outputs of these algorithms with our patients. For example, these algorithms basically, they formulate a risk estimate. So one question is, how do we are we going to share um, communicate the risk with our patients, with our service users, with their families, with the carers. This is a, a very important uh, uh, point, and there are also uh, ethical uh, issues around that. Yes, obviously. Um, when 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 you talk about um, um, the need for more data, um, um, wh what's the big challenge today in in gathering that data? And uh, is is it a question of of regulation? Is it a question of accessing data? What, what kind of challenges do you have today? One of the biggest challenges is that the uh, assessment measurements are completely different across the uh, across European countries. So one of the objectives of our cluster is to harmonize assessment outcome measures and also interventions. This would um, usually facilitate cross-disciplinary research and then merging a different databases. Then there is the issue of accessing them. There are regulatory um, limitations in terms of uh, being uh, being being this data being available to to third part users, um, but and and then the cluster is also active along these lines just to facilitate data sharing agreements and protocols across different clinical research institutes in Europe. Okay, so are, are these models also meant then to to help um, healthcare professionals? In, in their interaction with their own patients? Can they get access to those models? And uh, are you going to derive some, um, I don't know, clinical pathway uh, guidelines? Or what, what's what's the idea? Yes, yes, for sure. Um, we don't just want to predict, but we want the predictions to impact the, the pathways to care and the interventions, and therefore to improve treatments for, for young persons in particular. Otherwise, our research would not be very useful. And that's what, where basically the implementation um, aspects of this kind of research is crucial, is important. It's not only an academic exercise, a theoretical exercise, but it needs to be embedded in clinical practice. And that's why we need um, the best clinical sites in Europe to be uh, on board and to be active in these clusters. And thanks to the IBRA support, we have been able to advance this field substantially. Okay, so uh, major steps forward then in 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 uh, in that area. Now, uh, precision medicine is is something that is already like quite frequent in other disciplines. I would say, for example, in oncology. Um, why would you think that um, it has taken a little bit longer uh, in in psychiatry or in in uh, mental disorders? We have higher um, challenges. In, uh, in oncology, there are validated biomarkers and the etiopathology of the disorder is, is, has been long established and uh, neurobiological correlates, they are very well established. This is not the case for psychiatry um, because of the nature of mental disorders. I would say they are mental disorders first and they have got something to do obviously with the brain, but we are primarily studying the psyche of, of uh, the psychological inner world of individuals and this brings um, an extra layer of complexity because you need to figure out a way of in, um, connecting the mind with the brain and this is not simple and that's why um, there are no strong established biomarkers in, uh, in psychiatry as such. Some evidence is emerging but most of them still needs to be, still needs to be validated and consolidated. Having said that, um, precision psychiatry is, is possible um, using different types of information even for example using digital predictors using large-scale data that are collect, uh, routinely collected as part of, for example, electronic health records. 
So not necessarily using a, a high-tech, costly biomarkers, but using different sources of information. And uh, psychiatry is advancing thanks to neurosciences along those lines, but I think we still need to close the gap with oncology. Okay. And, uh, for example, um, uh, do you take some environmental factors uh, into consideration in your model as well? Or is it something that is really like too, too broad to be, to be taken into account? This is a great question. Most of, uh, of mental disorders originate from a gene environment interaction. We do have the so-called polygenic risk score to um, predict the accumulation of genetic load for, for development of certain mental disorders. And more recently, we have developed polyenvironmental risk score. As you hinted to, they can capture the single subject level exposure to specific environmental risk factors. And therefore, we can get the signal and information to tailor preventive approaches. For example, if a young person has accumulated childhood trauma and maybe cannabis misuse, we know that there may be certain risk for developing certain mental disorders and therefore uh, provide a certain a specific types of preventive care. Okay. Well, that seems, uh, sounds uh, uh, ex extraordinary, fascinating, but at the same time, very, very complex. Um, but uh, but it's, it's really good to see that, uh, you know, steps forward, uh, giant steps forward are, are being made. How do you think technology and, and IT uh, or big data science will help uh, in, in your domain? There are huge potentials associated with uh, the new um, innovations brought by neurosciences, big data, digital, um, digital uh, applications. Uh, however, we still need to apply our clinical interpretations. You need to select, for example, the um, our approaches on, 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 on primarily on what the patients would mostly benefit, would mostly need. So we we still need a kind of uh, to start from from the from them, from the service user, from the patients. We need to ask them what they would need help with, what would be the most important uh, outcome for them. To be to be addressed what are their unmet needs and also we need to co-work with them to develop precision medicine approaches uh, in particular to address uh, ethical concerns uh, as soon as as they uh, may may develop okay so so the patient really remains at the center of um of of, of the approach which is um which is uh, you know extremely uh, extremely important especially in 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 your field um, is there um, a key takeaway message that um, that that uh, you can you can think of, you know, from from the cluster work, uh, but also maybe a message that you want to convey to to um, to the, the 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 mental health community? Yeah, I think that uh, precision and in more generally preventive psychiatry is the future of our discipline, because uh, as I mentioned before, it has the potential to really um, change the life of many young persons who are affected with mental disorders. And we have learned that the sooner we intervene, uh, the better it will be for their outcomes. And this is why we are enthusiastic and we put so much effort and thanks to the IBRA uh, support and, fund and, and funds, uh, we've been able to um, join efforts and to advance this field. And one of the achievements has been um, a very important conference, which was held a few days ago in Brussels, addressing the um, ethical concerns surrounding the, this field. And uh, this has been an amazing work where patients themselves, service users, families and, and caregivers, they were all involved. They were co-writing a, a scientific report, which was eventually published. Uh, and it was a collegial workshop very well attended. And uh, there were European regulators, funders. And then we, we really, I think, we managed in, uh, in uh, implementing and disseminating uh, the importance of preventive and precision psychiatry across the whole Europe. And I think this will be uh, important for the next generation of research. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And when we, when we uh, know also that, uh, you know, the, the, the president of the commission mentioned mental health, you know, in her State of the Union um, uh, speech, I think this is very encouraging. So uh, thank you very, very much uh, for being with us today, uh, Professor. 
and um, and um, hoping to talk to you soon again. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everybody for uh, being uh, or for watching this video. Um, um, mostly, it, it will be um, uh, available uh, on different channels. Um, and also, if you want to get access to uh, the papers and the documentation that uh, Professor uh, uh, Fusa Poli mentioned, um, they are available on the EBRA website. So thank you very much and um, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.